The moon is the force of consciousness within us that is our subjective experience. So we are all seeing the world in a very specific way. We read our environments using our five senses. We take in this information. And as we take in this information, we're interpreting this information and we build a worldview around what we experience through our physical senses. This is the force of our moon. It's our unique and individual way of seeing the world. And each person has a totally different way of, of viewing that. And when people say, that's my truth, that's his truth, that's her truth, what they're saying is that's my moon, that's her moon, and that's his moon. That's my relativistic, subjective way of viewing reality as a whole. Everyone has a very unique perspective on the larger scheme of things. So when we're using our moon, we're seeing this subjectivity. When we're using our sun, we're seeing I'm the same as everyone else, or I am, the, I am divinity. And each person has this divine, unending, undying element to them. That's our solar energy. That's our solar force that sees the uh, undying and eternal aspect of ourself. And then using that understanding in order to, in order to project into the world a something bigger than yourself, creating that kingdom that's bigger than you. That's your solar energy working. The lunar energy is all about being a human. It's all about creating a personal context within larger creation, a personal view. And so these two forces, the divine masculine, the sun, and then the divine feminine, the moon, really work hand in hand. And on the back end of this video, I'm going to talk about how those two were working on balancing those two um, major forces that govern our self, our subjective experience, and then our experience as divinity. Um, but before I go into that, I'm going to speak specifically to the moon about what the moon is doing, what this force in us of the moon is. So the moon is governing our, and it is our subjective per, uh, perception. It's our perception of the world. And it's such a an all-encompassing and, and subtle thing that we don't think about it very often, how, how subjective we all actually are. Every moment of every day, it's a, a process of of sorting the world out on my terms, using my senses and, and creating my reality in a way. And throughout basically the whole day, we're using this, this way of seeing the world. We're using our moon way of seeing the world. And so when we incarnate into this, into this body, the first thing we perceive, the first thing that we're reading, we perceive ourselves first. And so the moon is really our, it's our self-perception. It's our self-image, how we view ourselves. And as we get older, we, we, this view of ourselves changes from our experiences with our environments. So this self-image will change. And it's all about being a, it's all about your own personal human experience. So when we look into the sky and we see the moon, if you were to tell anyone who had never seen the moon before, um, an alien, for example, and you said, what's the moon? Watch it for one month and what do you observe? And someone who has never seen the moon before, the, f the first thing that they would say, well, it changes. Every night it's a little bit bigger or smaller. It's growing or it's diminishing. It's the first thing you notice about the moon, that it changes. And <clears throat> although it's extremely subtle, the moon is changing every second. It's either growing, waxing into the full moon or diminishing, waning into the new moon, to the dark moon. And even though you can't see the tiny, tiny changes of its, of its growth and, and, and waning, it is changing every second. And so the moon, the first thing you would observe is that it changes moment to moment. So that's that force within us. We change moment to moment depending on each moment. So the moon is our uh, relationship with each moment being a different experience. <clears throat> and so 
people with a good moon force in them, they are able to separate each moment into un a unique experience. They, they can live in the moment very effectively. People with a, a harmed moon or a, a moon that is um, being looked at by malefic planets or in a, in a difficult house or um, affected in, specific, in certain specific ways, they're going to be stuck in the past. They're not living in the moment or they're going to be anxious about the future. They're going to be preoccupied. They're, while they're bringing in sensory information, they're going to be not using that sensory information to better each moment and to, and to um, enhance each moment and adapt to each moment. People with a difficult moon, they're really going to have an anxiousness to them because they can't focus in and change their life starting from each moment. So the function of these changes, well, what we can use, what is, what's necessary while we're living in each moment is to use the information we have and then be, to be able to adapt to our environment because we're not just simply taking in sensory information through our, our sight, our hearing, taste, touch, smell. We have to use that information in order to adapt and put ourselves in the best possible place in life that will give us the most fulfillment make us the moon wants to be comfortable the moon wants to be to be safe the moon wants to receive the best things from life and so during this changing process uh, every moment being different we use that in order to put ourselves in beneficial situations the moon force in us is all about adapting and it's all about changing. So we have to adapt our human life. We have to always be changing and going into better and better positions for ourselves. People with say the moon in the first three degrees of Scorpio or some, sometimes I've seen in Scorpio in general, they really get stuck in the, in the currents, uh, in them, they get stuck in the, in, um, wanting things to be different and, and thinking too much uh, about what they could have done. Instead of flowing and allowing what new information they're bringing in to, to give them a better um, vision, to give them a better understanding of how to put themselves in a better position than before. If they had su suffered abuse, they aren't using that past experience to better their current experience. They're not transforming each moment into something that is is more beneficial because the moon, as we said, is the is the feminine principle. The feminine principle is receiving. We all have this in us, and we're all looking to receive good things in our life, healthy things in our life. It's all about what are we receiving, what are we putting ourselves in a position to receive, and someone with a harmed moon. We said self-image. Someone with a with a a skewed self-image is going to be allowing themselves to receive things that reflect that skewed self-image, and a lot of times those things are uh, unhealthy things. Someone with a very positive self-image, someone with a healthy self-image that other people uh, there's an agreement, a concordance with how they see themselves and how other people see them. They're only going to allow themselves to receive healthy things that are beneficial to them going forward. So the self image, so the self image is determining what we're able, able and what we allow ourselves to receive into our life. It's, it's creating an attitude that determines how we see the world. Um, that human perspective, what, who, who are we subjectively? What is my way that I see myself? that's going to determine how I see the rest of the world. And so the moon force has this intricate connection about our attitude and about how we, how we see the world, but that's dependent on how we see ourselves. And so, um, within that, within the, the changing element of life, every moment is totally different. Every moment is totally unique. Um, the moon is the element water. And water is the perfect, um, the perfect element for this because 
life is a constant flow and water is um, water is the healthiest when it's in a good flow you drink water from a bubbling stream that's moving um, and not a stagnant pond because something that's stagnant uh, stagnant water is going to grow bacteria and um, microorganisms that if you drink it are going to be harmful for you but bubbling fresh water from a mountain you can drink directly and it's not going to hurt you because of that motion that it's not accumulating extra sediment or extra microorganisms at during the flowing process and that's the same with how how our minds will opt uh, optimally be functioning the moon being our our human mind our subjective human mind and so the water element uh, is all about flow and we want to put ourselves into a good flow of life and by that we are able to bring in healthy uh, we're able to allow ourselves to accept healthy things into our life. So um, uh, the moon is ruling water and uh, the moon also rules blood because blood is mostly made up of water. So the moon is, the, uh, is the, our blood. It's our circulation through our body. It's how water is circulating through us. Someone with bad circulation has a moon that has is being affected in certain ways. Someone with a good circulation on a holistic perspective, not only will they have their blood flow at a healthy level, but that allows them to have a healthy flow of energy through them. So the, the moon water element is ruling this flow within our body, but within our, our mental state of mind to be able to live in each moment. So, um, and that brings us to emotions. Most people, when they start talking about the moon, they say it's our emotions. And that's true because the emotions are flowing through us constantly. Emotions are what we feel. And the moon is not only taking in all of this sensory information, but it's that holistic view of the sensory information that gives us a feeling. That's our intuition. When we take all of the information that we get from life and then we get a, 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 a sensation about what that means, that's our intuition speaking to us. So the moon represents our, our intuitive feeling that we have. And it's that, it's, a, uh, it's all of the emotions combining into one general good or bad feeling. So the moon is ruling our emotions, the flow of our emotions that are always changing. Um, because logic, the sun, logical intelligence or rationality, it doesn't, it doesn't really change. Uh, things are just the way they are um, in a logical perspective. Um, and the, when you're built, say you're building a building, there's, there's logical rules to how a building stays up, stays up and doesn't fall over. That doesn't, those don't really change. You can invent a new way to, to construct a building, but there's a rule and there's a structure to that. There's no flow to logic. Logic is in a way pure and it doesn't, it doesn't ebb and flow. The moon is is the other side of that. It's the ebb and flow of the feelings of every moment. And so that's what that moon force is ruling in us, this flow of our, of our daily life. And so um, if you take that, and so the moon is the queen of, the, uh, of our planetary kingdom. And the sun, when the sun, when the king is making these logical steps, when we're going rationally, I'm going to do this, I'm going to I want to build this project. This is what I want to do with my life or just in my day. I'm going to do this and then I got to do this and then I have to do these things. And that can all is all a way to accomplish a, a larger goal, which is the sun's um, the sun's uh, task is to is to build into a kingdom, to build something that you revolve your life around. But then say you build that whole thing and then at the end it just doesn't feel right. The queen comes in. The person the part of you, the force in you that says yeah, I built this and I spent all this time, but it just doesn't feel right. There's something wrong about it. I don't know what it is. People with a good moon will follow that. They'll listen to that, that part of, of themselves saying that something's not right. It's that intuitive feeling of the holistic process. It's not step by step. It's not the, the details, not the, not the rationality. It's a, it's a sensation that you have. So when the queen comes in, the queen has that veto power over the, the rulership of the kingdom. If the king isn't listening to his queen and she says this isn't right, they're gonna, the king is going to pay for that because 
when if there's a pure sense of what our intuition is telling us, we're going to be able to listen to that intuition and, 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 and work with it and make the adjustments necessary that, um, that allows for our intuitive feeling to be respected. And so this, um, the king and the queen, they both, they're both rulers and in the kingdom, they both are ruling ourself and they both have different ways of seeing the world and they both have to be used in order for a complete, um, a, a hel the healthiest way to, uh, to make decisions on your own, but uh, also for your kingdom. There has to be a, a flow between what we intuitively sense and how we can logically build something. So as we said, the moon is reading, our moon is reading our environment at all times. It's always, um, it's always learning from our environment and picking up information. And for this reason, the moon is uh, the social aspect of us. People with a moon that's growing in the chart, when they have a, a waxing moon or a full moon, they tend to be more popular people because they're able to read situations better. They're able to read the emotions of other people. And when they're able to do that, they're able to put themselves in a, um, they're able to adapt to whatever is changing in their environment. And people tend to like these people because they have a, uh, a very soft nature to them that is able to accommodate new information and and being they're not stuck thinking about what's going on in the past or thinking about what they're going to do later in the day they're in the moment present with other people speaking with other people receiving information giving information that exchange of energy so people with a good moon there they tend to be um, uh, social butterflies and people tend to like them because of this this ability to um, to fluidly work with their environment. People with a waning moon that goes into a dark moon, they tend to be more introverted, not always, but that's because when the moon is diminishing, when the moon is, you could say, decay, not it's decaying in a way, it's kind of a metaphor, but it's getting smaller. By getting smaller, the person ends up looking into themselves more and perceiving themselves more, which makes them less um, growing uh, outwardly and um, interacting outwardly with their environment they're working more on their internal environment and when they're working on their internal environment they tend to to think more about themselves and they're perceiving themselves on a as deep as they can go with, with perceiving themselves so moon is really the force that is is a so is a, is a very much important social component to the moon and that social part goes into the nurturing part of of the moon the moon is uh taking care of other people and like i said it's that emotional reading of of other people that is important and through that we're able to nurture other people because we're able to care for them we have a a natural um a natural urge to understand what's going on the state of another person and um these people who are social or they intuitively know that what's good for other people is good for me too and it's not in a calculating way someone with a moon that's manipulating situations they're only pleasing other people and trying to make other people feel comfortable because they want to receive something for themselves it's not an equal exchange so someone who manipulates is only doing it for them to receive something that they want in the back of their minds they're thinking i want this i want to receive this people who are creating environments nurturing other people are creating these comfortable environments and it mutually benefits everybody and everyone can be in a, a very fulfilling place to uh, to receive the good things in life so someone with a good moon is going to have that um, natural tendency to nurture others because it's beneficial for everybody, but not in the manip manipulative sense. And in um, in Brihat Parashara Hora Shastra, the uh, text that was been was recompiled. It's in a very important um, book on Vedic astrology. The moon has uh, just, there's descriptions for the moon, and such as fluctuating, and fluctuating meaning growing and diminishing. But one interesting one is love sick. The moon is love sick. And why would we describe the moon as, as love sick? Well, 
the moon is, as you could think, a the negative and positive sides to a magnet. The moon is the negative side. The moon is re, is is seeking to receive, to bond, and to magnetically pull something into it. So our moon force in us is this part of us that that desires to connect with somebody else. It's this it's this drawing in. And we all have this. We all seek to bond with uh, with somebody else, with something, uh, with something stronger, or with something that is going to fill in that emptiness. So our moon side is it wants to physically uh, receive affection to create bonding with somebody. It wants to have psychological intimacy with somebody, and it wants to have a spiritual. Um, spiritual intimacy and to be spiritually filled with something greater than itself so one interesting thought is that we all all of our souls are negative souls all seeking to bond with the greater soul the greater reality the greater um, singular energy uh, of the of the creation and so our souls in general are this neg is negative it's a way to think about it it's not don't think of it as negative and positive but we all are seeking to bond with something greater than us. So that's the moon force in us. It's seeking to bond and create a greater love, create a greater connection with somebody else. It wants to be filled. And so someone with a, a good moon is, they know how to um, have a deep bond and connection with somebody else. They, they not only desire that bond, but they are able to intelligently and well, intelligently is the right word. They're able to they're able to put themselves in a position where they're bonding with someone that gives them the most fulfillment and happiness. Someone with a harmed moon, they might deny or they might not understand that what they need is love, with connection with another person or another um, even idea, a spiritual path. They're not, con they're not accepting the reality that they have a part of them that seeks to bond with something greater than itself. So these people will deny or use um, or try to, make, to try to fill that emptiness inside them in harmful ways. They're not bonding and receiving in a healthy way. And so it's that seeking to connect and it's that that loving, nurturing aspect of each one of us that seeks to bring something into us to fill us. So in that re that way, the moon is is love sick. It, it's desiring something to to fill the person up with that human uh, human bond. And so, I was speaking about how the moon is. It's this human perspective. It's this human subjectivity. And the sun is more of our connection with our self that is divine and undying. But our human part of us dies, and it's, it's a finite um, identity that we're building up. The moon is our self-identity. So these two forces are very interesting when you juxtapose them because we all have both of these forces, and they both need to be balanced as we grow. In, uh, as we grow. Our understanding that we are divinity and we're here with a, a creative vision to fulfill for the betterment of the whole of the all of uh, all of creation but at the same time we have this we have this individuality to us so what we have to do throughout life is to is create a balance between these two energies of who am I and how do I fit in the rest of creation and it's a process and we can't just have one without the other because we, if, if you think about it, why do we have, why do we have to have a subjective perspective? Why do we need that? Why can't we always just be, why can't we always just be thinking, I'm a piece of divinity, I, I'm a part of God, I have divinity in me. Why do we need this human side of us? Why do we need to perceive things differently from everybody else? And this is because our world is a world of differentiation. The world is an illusion in this sense. The illusion is that everything is separated. But really, that's an illusion because everything is not separated. Everything is, is made up of the same divine energy. But as creation happens, that energy gets 
get, gets formed in different ways that appear as different things. They just appear on the surface as different. But at the foundation, they're all the same thing. So we need this moon force within us in order to read the illusion around us. We need this illusion, we need to read this illusion because it's going to affect each person in a different way. We're going to see things differently and we create an individuality based on our own self-perception of this illusion. And the moon is oftentimes grouped symbolically with the idea of illusion. And one example of this that I can think of uh, that really that really expresses it deeply is the film production company uh, DreamWorks Pictures. And they have the, uh, before they play their movies, they have how a production company puts that video up just before the movie starts. And there's the crescent moon and you're looking at an image of the crescent moon and then you see a bobber from a fishing pole hit the image and the image ripples and you can tell that what you're looking at is a reflection and you're looking at water again moon and water and then the camera tilts up and it goes to the actual moon and the little boy with the fishing rod sitting in the moon so this is a very powerful symbol showing that the moon is ruling over illusions and what you were seeing in that reflection wasn't the real thing the real thing was in the sky the real moon was in the sky what you were seeing is a reflection of the moon and that's what our that's a sum up of what our reality is it's a reflection of the real thing we're seeing we're seeing um, coverings in a way an illusion is like something that's that's in front it's like a veil and so the world veils to us what seems different, but actually at the foundation of it, the real thing is all of the same energy. And so we need this moon force within us in order to, to navigate this illusion because it's going to affect each person differently. There is, um, if we didn't need this force, it wouldn't be in the sky itself. There would, if there wasn't a need to differentiate our own personal realities, there wouldn't be a moon, but there is a moon. And that force is giving us unique experiences that we then have to combine with the understanding that we are at one with divinity. So that flow and mix and that understanding my individuality with my place in the whole of things. And it's that, or my place in the greater scheme of things. And I am a piece of divinity and I am one piece of divinity and we're all divinity, but I'm an individual uh, aspect of a divine thing. So that's how the, the moon and the sun are, um, are mixing uh, within ourselves. It's these two forces that are ruling ourselves. We say that these are the sovereigns of, of our planetary kingdom, these two extremely important energies in us. And another thought I had is uh, there, there's a lot of mystery surrounding the moon. It's a very mysterious, uh, it has mysterious origins. And there are old, um, there are old tales about that the moon wasn't in the sky at a certain point. So when you think about that, if the moon wasn't in the, wasn't in the sky, that would mean that people don't have the moon force in them, meaning that they're not seeing things as separate. Everyone would be seeing everything as they are all divinity. Everyone is seeing that, yes, I'm divinity and that's divinity and everyone is seeing divinity everywhere and there's no separation between the divinities. We're all a divine soul, a divine piece of the larger uh, super soul, eternal super soul, undying and we all have that. And there's no moon to say that you're living in an illusion, you're living in a material world. It's an interesting thought I had and it kind of goes back into the moon our subjective experience is so all-encompassing in the way we go about our daily lives that we really take it for granted. We don't, we don't think that we're, we don't think that we're being totally subjective. But in every moment, our subjectivity is really the format of our of our mind. It's 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 how we all are seeing the world, and it's it's so big that we don't even. It's so. Um, 
important and vital to our daily life and everything that we do that we, we just totally forget about it. How often are we sitting there and and thinking and feeling that I'm a divine soul and everything is, is divine and seeing the other people, seeing everyone, their divine soul and everybody else and seeing the sameness of everybody else. Because a good quote, uh, I can't remember who said it, but it was, uh, they asked a guru, so how do we treat other people? And the response was, there are no others. It's all the same energy. A person who achieves a high level of understanding is able to really see deep and see the, the divinity in each person. And they're seeing that not everybody, that no one is really different at all. So it's, but each person is still going to have to come to terms with the fact that we need that moon force, we need our subjectivity in our daily life in order to navigate our material world. What I wanted to tack on at the end here was just a couple things that I didn't say explicitly, but I explained, but I didn't say uh, explicitly what it was. So the moon is our self-perception. So the moon is uh, also a harmed moon is going to give somebody a sense of, of jealousy and envy. And those are um, sensations, emotions we have when we have a negative self-image and we see other people with positive self-images or things that we like about other people, but we're not adapting ourselves in order to obtain those qualities that we want that those other people are exhibiting. So there's really two kinds of envy. The wide-eyed envy, oh wow, I, I want that. That person is, they, does, they do this so well and I'm, my eyes are open, I'm absorbing everything that I can, can learn about that person because I wanna be like that. It's a, it's, uh, it's learning and, uh, and uh, taking in information and reading other people in order to better yourself, in order to receive good things and then to improve yourself. The other type, kind of envy is closed eye envy, the envy where you're not taking in the information, you're just looking with a um, kind of a, a harmful gaze at another person where you're not trying to absorb what they have, you just feel um, a negative, you have a negative feeling towards what that person represents or, um, or is, and you're not trying to improve yourself and you're not trying to adapt yourself in order to get those qualities. You just want to receive them without having to really change anything about you. So um, people with uh, great moons, they're able to adapt and see other things that they like and other people absorb those qualities and improve themselves, adapt to themselves. People with, um, with difficult moons are, are going to just feel these negative feelings inside them uh, of jealousy and envy. The other is that the moon rules the moment, uh, moment to moment, we are all perceiving things. So the moon rules the past moments, the moon rules our memories, and it rules the future moments, our imagination. And so it's not just each moment, we, have, we all have memories, and it's something we all have to uh, we all have to come to terms we have a past the moon is ruling our way that we see our past and how that uh, influences our self-image and also how we envision our future the future time our imagination for how we want things to be and having a positive imagination for the future seeing the possibilities for our life gives a person motivation to see the good things that are possible so the moon is ruling not just each moment, but past moments and future moments. And they're all intertwined with how, uh, with our own subjectivity. Because the memory, we, as we know, memories are, can be very, very subjective. People see different things and they relate different stories. And our imagination is completely subjective. No one, we all can have similarities for what we want and imagine in the future, but the, the way that, that we work them out in our heads are completely unique to our own uh, individual way of, of seeing the world. And the last is that um, it's pretty self-explanatory, but moon is ruling the blood and moon rules uh, femininity. And we see that women, uh, they menstruate every 28 days, the exact amount of day, 27 to 28 days of the moon cycle. So that's all connected. And you can see the, uh, how um, blood flow within a woman is di directly related to the force of the moon. So a very um, acute way of seeing the forces working within us. It's not just a force outside of us. And so the, the female menstrual cycle is a perfect example of how these are forces within us. And so these videos, uh, as I'm making them you and contemplating and diving deep into each energy and even 
long before. The more you contemplate them, the more you learn. And these videos are in no way meant to be final um, analyses on, on the planetary energies. It's really for me and for, for you uh, as an introduction to really get as close as we can to how these forces are working. And, and, um, but not from a symbolic and a representational way, from a direct way in how these forces are inside of us and how they're, they're moving inside of us to create human nature, to create our uh, personal, our experiences as human beings. And uh, the, more you, uh, the more you think and the more you um, learn about the planets, the more you learn. It, it doesn't end. There's always something new to learn with uh, studying these energies. So the next video, we're going to be going into Mars.